Bordeaux, France, a red wine lover's dream. With the beautiful city center and 6,000 chateaus surrounding it, it's hard not to feel like you were swept up into a picture book fairy tale. But with poor planning, you could end up feeling more like a frog than a princess. We're going to talk about how to get there, when and how long you should go, getting around, Bordeaux wine for dummies, how to choose your chateaus, and where to sleep. If you want to skip through to one of these, check out my video info. Hey everyone, my name is Haley, and this is Plain of Champagne. Your solo girl's guide to travel. Getting there. You could fly into the Bordeaux airport, but if you're coming from the United States, you'll likely have a layover. So instead, we decided to fly into Paris Charles de Gaulle and then took the train from the airport straight to Bordeaux saint jean It will take around three and a half hours. Another option would be to take the train from paris Gare montparnasse which is only a two-hour train, but by the time you take a taxi or the RERB in a metro line, it'll end up being around three and a half hours anyway. But if you're coming from the center of Paris, this is a great option. These prices do increase as you get closer to the date. We went in September, which happened to fall right during harvest time. This was cool because we got to see the grapes being processed. However, some chateaus close during this time of year. I would recommend any time between May and October so you have nice weather to walk around. How long? We arrived a late afternoon into Bordeaux. The next day, we spent a day in saint Emilion and had dinner back in Bordeaux city center. Then we drove and did two days in the Medoc region, staying in a bed and breakfast in Poyoc. So what would I change? If we did it again, I'd probably do at least a full day in Bordeaux City, a whole day and night in saint Emilion, and then two to three days in the Medoc or another region. Getting around. If you're looking to do just Bordeaux City Center and maybe saint Emilion, there's no need to have a car. They have trams and trains that can get you where you need to be. I talk a lot about this in another video, which you can find here. If you want to travel outside the center, like out to see the castles and vineyards, you'll need a car. We rented through Sixt Rental Car and picked it up at the Bordeaux train station. Another day we did a private driver booked through wine paths. Bordeaux wine for dummies. There are both red and white wines in Bordeaux, but they're known primarily for their reds. They're made from mixing the Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot grapes. There's a big river that splits Bordeaux into the left bank and the right bank. Generally, the left bank will have more cab, so they are powerful and rich. There, you'll find Medoc and Poyoc. The right bank will be higher in Merlot, a softer blend usually ready to drink earlier than the left bank. There, you'll find saint Emilion. But something you won't find on the right bank is chateaus that are classified Grand Cru Classé. This was a ranking system established in 1855. But the catch? If you didn't pay the fine to be reviewed in 1855, you can never be considered a Grand Cru Class A. So if you're a Bordeaux winemaker and your next door neighbor on both sides, so you pretty much have the same land, is a Grand Cru Class A? Sorry, you can never be one. A Grand Cru Class A classification makes for a more expensive wine. It's like you're paying for a brand name, but there are plenty of generic brands that are just as good. So how do you go about picking? Choosing your chateau visits. First of all, they call the wineries chateaus because chateau means castle in French. And boy, are there a lot of castles. We were a bit overwhelmed by the options and were on a time crunch. So we booked through Wine Pass, a third party booking agency. She really tailored the experience to fit our group specifically. If, however, you want to take on the challenge, make sure you book your wine tours plenty of time in advance. The earlier, the better. Also, pull out your Google Maps and make sure you're giving yourself enough time to get from one place to another. If you're interested in seeing a sample wine tour, check out my video here. Where to sleep. You have so, so many unique options on where to stay. In Bordeaux City, make sure you stay somewhere in the center. These are mostly all pedestrian streets, which is really nice when you're walking around at night. We stayed at this Airbnb, which was lovely.
When we traveled to Medoc, we stayed at this bed and breakfast, which was so charming. But it really depends on which chateaus you're visiting. Some of the chateaus actually double as hotels, like Chateau La Tour Carne. Although, after a full day of red wine tasting, I'm sure all you'll need is a blanket. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. And if you want more information, check out my website, plaindechampagne.com. Thanks for watching. Cheers.